Moses, right? He's the one who set the helped set the Israelites free. You know, I noticed from when he was a baby, he was running. It's like he, he's born in a time where there's a calling over his future. But the calling over his future wants the Pharaoh to kill him. So the decree goes out and he's running. Uh, he runs from, I think, his mother's womb in, in life form um, into the basket that they put on the sea. Now they're trying to make get him to escape um, whatever it is whatever is in front of him because the calling on him is greater than greater than he could see. And I'm sharing this today because I want you to know that any time that you call for a greater purpose, then the attack is going to be running behind you. You know, that it, it does not matter what you're called to do. If it's greater than you, if it's bigger than you, if it calls you to set somebody else free, help somebody else, do anything for anybody else, you got to know that the assassination attempt is subscribed for you when you have something that is important over your future to do. The attack runs behind you. You don't believe that. Moses is a baby, but he's put in a basket. Moses is a baby, but he had to wage what a, a sea as a baby in the basket. Moses is teeny tiny, hadn't even learned how to walk yet, talk yet. And there's an attack over his dream. He, he hadn't even conceived it. And their enemy was after it. It ain't, it ain't always about how big or how good you can articulate it. Ain't, it ain't always about how much of the plan that you can write down or how much you can prove or how many assets that you have. It's not always about how much financing. It's not always about the credit score. Once you have the assignment over your life, you have to know that the enemy's after your boat. Not the boat because he's in a basket. He's after your basket. You hear me? Your basket. <laughs> you like that? Your basket. Here's what I'm saying. You have to grow here. Don't don't just come here and float here. Grow here. They put Moses in the basket, sell him down the river, and the odds are against him. He ain't gonna make it. They put him in a basket. He's a baby with no bottle. He's gonna starve to death. He ain't gonna make it. Put him in a basket as a baby. He ain't got no support, no passport. It's probably the worst day the storm comes. I don't know, it's probably raining. But watch this. He made it not only to his destination, but he made it into royal hands. I, I gotta tell you on the day that the hands God has put you on, that the assignment that's on you is gonna purposely prepare the way for you. If, if you don't believe that God will bring you not only into the house, but he'll pay the house completely off. If you, if you don't believe that God not only want to show it to you, but have you own it, ride it, drive it, <laughs> have possession of it. That it's, it's not just about getting you to where you're going. It's once you get there, whose hands are you in? It says that, that, that the royal family comes out and finds the baby in the basket. I'm, I'm telling you, you, you got to watch the way you walk. Um, because many places God puts you, it, it's going to seem like he wants to hurt you, but really he's only placing you in position for who it is that needs to handle you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on to my text because I, I, got, I got one important part that I want to focus on really quickly. But let me do this first. They, they um, take him out the basket. They look at him and they say that this is a Hebrew but, but we are Egyptians. That, that's, that's a conflict. You understand what I'm saying? Here, here, here is the conflict. Here, your, your team look good this morning. Here, here is the conflict. The conflict is we're too different. Uh, but the calling that's on me will, will help the enemy 
uh, notice that there's an assignment here and you just can't run around or play with taint on. You can't just speak bad about you. You just can't handle. You can't you can't misconduct uh, in action here. Somebody who has the calling, the anointing, the assignment, the grace of God on them. When, when you come to it. Know if the people next door or not, but maybe they needed a a, a word of devotion. I, I don't know. It's, it's 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 for you too. It's 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 for anybody who's connected to you who believes that God maybe called you, but wasn't sure about what you were called to do. Don't 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 worry about that. That God has selected me uh, not to be like them. I'm different from them. That's why they don't like you. That's why they ain't dealing with you. That, that's why they can't handle you. The reason that folk talk about you or look at you, the reason folk doubt you the way that they do, is right here because we're different. But I'm called in it to save people out of it who came to it looking for hope and couldn't find it because. You didn't do it. He says, they didn't do it. The Egyptians didn't. They ain't set them people free. So God sent Moses. He says, I send you to be among them, not to conform to them, but that you can learn about them. Step out from them. Come back and save your people from their ways because you know the place of where it is to be royalty but not be unloyal here. You have to know God will bring you to situations just so you can see yourself coming out better. Well, you see yourself, you could have died here. You could have been tried here. You, you could have cussed them out over there. You, you, you could have thrown it in. You could have quit last week. But the fact that you stayed now provides you the initiative to say to anybody else, I stayed. I, I know you can too. Let me strengthen you. Let me encourage you. Let me be sign of testimony of anybody who was looking at it, doubting to it, that I came through it too. That's, that's, that's just what he said. I want you to be around the Egyptians, but you're going to save the Israelites. And then Moses starts running. And I'm, I'm, I'm done. This is going to be my last point here. I'm, I'm, I'm done. He says, uh, I want you to save them. Hear me now. S save them. Uh, but to save them, you're going to have to run from them. So Moses starts running. Uh, he runs into the uh, desert where he faces an Egyptian and he kills him. Now there's blood uh, on his feet. He's running. When, when he comes to a place of finding a wife, God didn't tell him that I want you to marry this one, but he takes her anyway. I think it provokes trouble on his way. He's running. Uh, he runs from house to house. He runs from field to, uh, to yield. He runs from every place that God told him maybe you could be, maybe you would see. He runs uh, from the palace to the uh, players club. He running, uh, Moses, who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the one in the text. I'm talking about you running from your calling and your gift, your assignment and your grace where, where God would prepare you for this place. He didn't let you die yesterday, which means that that's calling over your life or where you are today. You're running like Moses. Watch this now. He's running. And when he comes to a place of setting the people free in Israel, hear me, setting the Israelites free in Egypt, they leave Egypt. And come to the Red Sea. Moses stands on the mountain. And asks God, open a way so I can run through. I said, I, I really want to minister to you. But, but I really can't because all you're doing is running. He said, you, you, you running from the Egyptians who ain't even following you. You running. You, you, you running from people who are smaller than you. Who look up to you. Who can actually learn from you. Or you can get something from them. But where you are exerted. Because it's a Red Sea in front of you. Stop running and stand still. Moses said part it. God parts it. They run through. But the trouble didn't stop there. Because he hit the rock. He's running with a bad temper. You, you, you got to know that God positioned you to be here, not for you to act out over there, not, not for you to conform over here, not, not for you to be one of them, but for you to show them this is how you remain calm and cool and still be pissed off and don't let it affect you. Not, not the ministry that's on you, the witness that you're called to. This is how you do it. He says you don't hit it. You just stand still in it. But Moses is running. So they run around the wilderness 40 years. He's running. When he comes to a place of trying to set them free in the mental, he had to walk up the mountain in the natural. He says, God, I want them to be free, but God said, I call you to be higher so you can look down on them and be able to tell them where they went wrong. Uh, you you got to know God calls you not to set people free who are on the same level as you. 
but he called you to stand up step up, to, to, to stand up higher, to step up deeper, to come up greater so that you can look down on people and show them there is a better way, there, there, there is a successful way, there is a easier way. It's not that I'm trying to sell information, here's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to tell somebody there's a better way to do it. When you do it with God, you'll do it with pride. When you do it with him, you'll do it with the assignment on you. When you do it for him, there'll be initiative around you. When you do it, he'll call you to a higher mountain. Prove it, preacher. Moses, come up the mountain. He came up the mountain. Moses did. Now, Trevor told me last week he went up the mountain with leaders from the heads of the families. And, and he comes to a point on the mountain where he stops running, turns around to the people who's with him, say, y'all stay right here. And I'm, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm promised. I, I just wanted to tell somebody some, some people are only here uh, to help you get on the way, but they're not supposed to travel with where you're destined. To be. You, you, you got to know that I'm glad and I'm thankful that, that you travel with me. But this is where you get off and I go to God by myself. You, you got to know that when you Bible study. Uh, you, you, you may do it with a group, but when you Bible private, then I do it in, in, in the selection of my privacy where I go to God for me. I don't need nobody petitioning for me. I don't need nobody ringing up no prayer requests for me. I don't need nobody passing around no offering plate for me. Here's where I do it because I seek him for myself. He says, I need to go up the mountain, but the people who headed me, I need you to stay behind me. I, I don't need you to sing for me. I can I can praise God by myself. I don't need you to ride me. I can walk to church by myself. I don't need you to do all that for me and solidify the relationship that God put on me. I can do it myself. He said, y'all stay back here. I got to go up a little bit higher and I'm done. I promise I'm done. I'm done. When it comes to the burning bush, I ain't even focus on that. When it comes to God in the flesh, I ain't even focus on that. When it comes to a point where he's about to step on it, God said, take your shoes off. Moses said, there's blood on my shoes. Moses said, I've been running through sand. I can't. Moses said, I've been around Egyptians. I'm an Israelite or a Hebrew. I can't. Moses said, I've been running in the wilderness 40 years. This material has melted into my feet. I can't. He said, I've been strapped in it so long. I don't know no other way to go. It's not that it's attached to me. It just hurts me. Can't. You, you got to know God looked at him in that moment. Stop that. Eh? Why, why are you beating yourself in the head? I said, don't do that, Jeremiah. Don't beat yourself in the head. He says, take your shoes off. I don't know where you are in the room on a day. And I don't know what's been attached to your feet. That you would be the fear before you would take on the assignment of God that you win. But I only came on a day not to do no offering nor appeal. I didn't come to solidify you for my service or to tell you that you can be bigger than what Eminem is. I didn't do that. I wanted to come and tell somebody today to take your shoes off. Take your shoes off and stop being defeated before you walk up the mountain to the grace of God who delivered you to win in it. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off the mental suppression in your mind that says that God wouldn't do it for you. He'd just do it for people connected to you for you to see that the blessing was close enough to you but it would still miss you. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off where you would doubt God and say that I've seen it sometimes but I'm not sure if it's going to be all the time. I know God the work still in in my time, not my time, his time, which is may not come when you want him to come, but he is. I don't know nobody to know him. And on time, God, yes, 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 take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. Watch this. Because of what you're about to walk into. It's not that you're perfect for it. Because it's holy ground. You've just been through enough. To appreciate standing 
in God's presence, unfiltered and unadulterated. That's that's it. That's all I want to tell somebody. You you got to take your shoes off and worship you. You you you, you got to take them off and just be you in your real way and be like God. I, I know I messed up. God, I, I know I, I I say stuff that seems effed up. God, I I know I don't always do what's right. Sometimes words come out of my mouth wrong. Some, some sometimes I sleep with the wrong people. God, sometimes I go to the wrong place. Some, sometimes I sip on a little bit of what. I just take my shoes off here and be comfortable with God. Cause ain't nobody next to me who can judge me when God called me to take it off and be comfortable with Him. It don't matter what people like. I'm going to take it off. It, it don't matter if they support it. I just take it off. It don't matter if they want to embrace it, if they want to share it, if they want to support it, want to block it, want to lie to you, on you, for you, around you that you didn't do. I need to tell you I done took it off. That's that's it. That's it. I, I wasn't even going there, but I'm going to close right there. Though You got to take it off. Take, take, take off the word of doubt that said they couldn't uh, do anything for you, so you had to depend on the government to support you. I take that off. I take off the requirement to say I had to walk here because I couldn't run there. I'm running into my desk. I take it off. I take off every stipulation, every manipulation, every circumstance that I would put myself in to say I could not win. Had to wait on them to support me, clap for me. I had to be waited to be placed in it. No, uh, I'm li listen, uh, I take Take it off. I take off the restrictions. I take off the requirements. And what do I put on? I put on my feet in holy ground. I'm, I'm walking into my destiny, into my greater calling. I'm walking into the greater assignment that's over my life. I'm walking into my next season that's going to be my best season because this is God's reasoning that he called me here. Not that I can gloat and cloud in me. It ain't about me. Please don't look at me. But only see that the Moses uh, around my shoes was attached to the feet that was attached to the sandals that God says call off every restriction that you Will put on your mental in suppression and say God could not do it. I believe him today to not only take the shoes off, but I believe him to bless you with the shoes on, with them off, with them to your side of your standing and to know you're on holy ground. God says, I've called you to be different, look different, have different. I'm going to bless you with your shoes off. I bless you with your shoes on. That's all I wanted to share. Y'all have a good day.